Good morning. Thank you for coming. A Friday with horribly depressing weather. I saw very few people. One professor and maybe 10 students when I came in this morning at a quarter to nine on the campus. If you're new to the class, I know that some people added during yesterday day. Perhaps you, if you have time, you want to stay after the class and ask me a couple of questions or contact me or find out how to contact me. I don't have any other classes after this one. Of course, we might have to get out of the room if uh, the, the next class uh, comes in. They, they didn't come in on Wednesday, maybe they switched to online modality for, for some reason. Today, I am going to show you what changes and additions were made to the class website. Then, as usual, for a Friday, we will watch a short video, a recent video from January 2022 by Thomas Frank about Notion and the latest changes, updates in the program. Then I will complete my demo of the program that I initiated on Wednesday. I will recap some of the fundamentals of formatting. I will just add one potential feature, one feature that you can avail yourself of. And then for a little bit of time, the idea would be for every one of you to work on a new page so that during this hands-on segment, you can stop and ask questions and little by little, we can all become familiar with the program. Hopefully, ideally, if there is enough time at the end, I would like to either hear your reactions to the app as new users, or have someone share the page they've created with me, and I can access it from the computer, and you can either come here or from your seat illustrate what you've done and talk about the experience or the issues that you encountered and hopefully resolved, okay? As for the assignments, you find them on the class website and you know that there is the first written assignment based on the discussion from the first week, My Digital Life, and you find the instructions at the end of week two, and that is due next Friday. It has to be completed inside a separate Notion page that you are supposed to share with me using my email address, andrea.fedi at stonybrook.edu. If you do that, not only will I be able to see your assignment, read it, review it, but I'll be able to leave comments for you and leave the grade inside the page itself. In order for this, of course, to be formally acceptable, you should not make the page public, just share the page with me. And I'll show you how to share a page, if not today, I'll show that inside Wednesday's demo next week. And really, it's, it's, a, it's only a click away or two clicks away, so it's not a procedure that takes a lot of time, okay? As far as the website, I was finally able to edit and upload some of the videos that I took with my iPad Pro of last week's lectures. You know that for the first lecture, I relied on Eco360, and that was a major fail for me. I provided a digital recording, an MP3 file that plays inside the browser or can be downloaded for the first class if you missed it. And right now, you find YouTube videos that are unlisted, therefore you need the link, therefore you need to go through the class webpage to find them. The videos of Wednesday's class from last week, Friday's class from last week, 
and I'm already working on this week's videos so in a few days you will find all the videos from this week and I'm trying to establish a process a routine a new routine to work these videos the main problem is to get them out of the iPad in a, in a timely fashion because they're big files and because you cannot force the iPad to do something just because you want to that established a different process that you have to follow so as you see here I have embedded the YouTube videos inside a separate page that I created for week one where you also find some of the pictures of the notes that I put on the board and you can simply click on the play button and watch the video there or if you prefer you can click watch on YouTube of course these are placed inside my channel Andrea Fedi SBU however if you visit the channel itself you will only find one or two videos those are the public videos as I said these videos are instead unlisted and this is the video for Friday's class of course as you can understand very well on Friday last week we watched segments of two videos Ali Abdal's video on Notion Thomas Frank videos on Notion in my editing I had to cut out the videos to avoid copyright issues I only included the beginning of the video so that you see where we started watching the video but if you want to if you miss the class and you want to review you should review those videos you just have to use the links that you find inside last Friday's lesson plans okay and I'll have to do the same and I did something similar cut out a segment of 10-15 minutes from Wednesday's class because if you remember during Wednesday's class we had a discussion I gave you time to think about that so I split the video in two parts before that activity after that activity so that there was no dead time in between okay the videos are high resolution 1080p 60 frames per second so you can see the screen you can see the board you can read what's on the screen and all of this as I said the, the website is public you can review everything even on a smartphone on the screen of a phone and it's touch friendly and uh, I think more accessible than Blackboard would be and the inter interface is just intuitive remember that we have a test page we are working on and I'll continue to add to it and as I said this is the lectures and readings page at the end of which you find the instructions for the various assignments continue working on your notion page because the page will be due later on but it's a good thing if you work on it and invoke my assistance whenever necessary you read the first chapter that I introduced and I also provided a study guide I provided my own notes that you find on Monday and then the instructions about my digital life and again if you missed that class you can review also my introduction and my advice so this time I prepare the video so we are not stuck watching commercials before the video the video is about six minutes okay and as I said before is about recent upgrade because Notion is a big company and they have lots of lots of customers so they're uh, changing the program as needed and the title of this is Notion just got tempered 10 times better for writing Ten times better for writers, and I do apologize, but I had to use my most clickbait-worthy thumbnail post for this video because Notion just released a feature that I've actually been asking them to release for longer than any other feature I can think of. 
what are the ideas we get out of this? First of all, we see the practice, the routines, the processes of a professional who works in a field where knowledge is required in order to output a product that is a video about productivity and self-improvement in general. Therefore, instead of relying on the traditional approach whereby you have your computer as the repository of contents, notes, documents that you then gather and place somewhere on the screen or the taskbar of your computer or digital device in order to <clears throat> consult, review those contents and then move on to the production of material such as a script with a digital app, a knowledge-based app such as Notion, you have one place for everything. You have one place where you can bring in PDFs of documents and articles that you need to review, copies of web pages or portions of web pages that you've extracted using their web clippers and that you've classified in different ways so that when it comes to writing a certain script for him or do a project such as a paper for you or later on a report for your business or for your supervisor, you can, out of the huge collection of documents and contents and different kinds of data, introduce a filter that will limit the scope of your exploration to a set of data, a set of a collection of contents and you have everything within the same app. And also, the other side of the demonstration that we saw from this video is that when it comes to the act of creative writing or writing anything that requires knowledge and new knowledge to be produced, therefore, I'm not writing something that follows an exact template. I'm not writing something that will be repeated the same kind of report at the end of each cycle of each day, week, month, etc. But I'm producing something new. Then traditional text editors and word processors may not be the most suitable, the most expeditious instruments to produce something that is intellectual in nature, something that requires quality to be added and having a more dynamic editor, one where you can have a table of contents generated, folding text, hiding text from view whenever you don't need to review it, or just focusing on a portion of the text, comes easier than in some word processors. Of course, even inside Google Docs or inside Microsoft Word, you can have headings you can have those headings produce an outline, you can fold text, etc. However, clearly, those programs were not meant for this kind of approach. They have those features, but they may be more cumbersome. And there is a lot more that goes on inside Word Processor. There is a lot more that encumbers your view of the screen, which takes focus away from the essentials. And companies relying on this execute complex projects where more than one person is involved in the creation and multiple people are involved in the review, the revision and the perfecting of these materials before they're published. And all of that happens more easily than the sharing, the collaboration, than in Word, and for as far as Google Docs, that is possible again, but this time, instead of offering too much like Word, Google Docs offers too little, right? Just the bare essentials. Now, I want to briefly review what we've done so far during our demos, show you just a couple of things in my page, and then we'll do the hands-on activity. So this time I use the screen on Wednesday, this time I'll use the board just to summarize the basic approaches to 
the modification of text. We've seen how you create a page, right? There are two ways. You use the plus sign that you find everywhere on the sidebar. And also, otherwise, you can simply put the at sign and put there in a box the title of the page you want to create. And once the program, after you type the first few letters, realizes that you're not not looking for a page to link there, they'll change the menu dynamically and suggest you want to create a new page with this title. You say yes, then you click on the link to a page that doesn't exist yet, that is empty. You visit that page and you populate that page with content. And this kind of levels can be replicated ad infinitum. That is to say, you can go from one page to a sub page on that sub page to another sub page, or one of those sub pages can host a table, something we will study next week, which is in fact a database, where you can put a hundred pages in a more organized way, adding the all important tags to semantic tags to the content, marking the, the content of the page that will allow later to filter effectively uh, it, it, out of the big collection that you have accumulated just those few pages that you need to complete a project. So we said in this kind of software which used to be called wiki because a wiki was uh, developed as a concept during the 1990s as an application to work on intellectual project you can just type text, right? You don't need to be a coder. You just add text and something will appear on the page immediately. The page will be, whatever you type will be visible to all the people you've shared the page with. You can also, and of course, if they have editing rights, the collaborators can intervene and change the text you can add codes according to a system that was developed many years ago called Markdown. Markdown apply is the idea that instead of writing the kind of complex coding that is required if you're programming in C++, Python, R, etc., that you use normal characters that you find on your keyboard in such a way that you will produce formatting or other effects will be imposed on a text. So, for example, if you place two asterisks and then you write a word, that will be formatted in bold. If, and the same, if you have two underscore, the word, and two underscore, same as bold. If you have just one asterisk, the word, and then you close that block with another, you have italics. If you have one underline, before and after a single word or a series of words, you have underline. If you put a number sign and then, this is very important, then you place, you press the space bar, then you have a heading one, <coughs> changes into a title, right? And on and on it goes, two of them, followed by a sign, changes whatever you write after that into a heading of the second level, etc., etc. And there are many of these, for example, for a list, use hyphen, followed by a space, and you have a bulleted list, right? And then you use tab to create sub-levels, 
for a numbered list, you use any number. You don't have to start with one. Whatever number you want your sequence to start with, followed by a dot. All of this, or the list, has to happen at the beginning of the line, say here. This can happen anywhere. And then once again, you have to also to press the space bar, then you have a numbered list. You know also, and I will not continue, these are just the basic examples, you know that for a link, you just type a URL, a, a, a web address, or, and, and it becomes clickable, or you paste a link onto a word that you want to become clickable. But the next important thing is that you find a series of dots next to a block, and you can select and drag a block by using those and your mouse. Or you can just click, and then you'll have a series of menus that allow especially to turn something into something else, to turn a text into a quote, to turn a text into a callout box, to turn a text into a number, an item in a numbered list, in a bulleted list, etc., etc. Or you can just select a block of text and then choose an option from the toolbar that will appear. Finally, something that we haven't, uh, I've done a couple of things only, but I have, haven't fully introduced. The last resort, when you want to use this program as a programmer would do, that is to say by spending most of your time typing without moving your hands and using the mouse, because that is the most productive way for a fast type, is is to, at the beginning of a line, put a slash. When you put a slash, then you can do two things. Once again, you have a menu, a very long menu, that allows you to choose things such as add an image, embed a video, embed a PDF, etc., etc. Or, the simplest thing, again, without using the mouse, there is always another way, just by using the keyboard, and that is to write but not to write code, to write natural language. You want to put a table of content somewhere, you put slash, and then without a space, you start typing table, and two options will appear when you type table. One is, do you want a table like Excel, or do you want a table of content? And again, I don't have to use the mouse, because I can just continue typing, and the moment I type table of, then this will become the only option. And a table of content will be produced that will collect all the various headings at the various levels that exist on that page. The same is true for anything else. Do you want to add a video? Slash video. Do you want to add an audio file? Slash audio, slash sound. Do you want to add an emoji? Slash emoji. And the options will come up and allow you to do that. Okay, slash image, then you can choose an image from their repertoire, <laughs> they have very few, <laughs> and they're kind of lame, but from slash image and the menu that comes up, you can select an image to upload from your computer, okay? And on and on we go. And we mentioned how other things can also happen whenever you dump, whenever you paste a link on the page, then you have three options. One is dismiss, meaning you want this to be a plain link. Clickable, that's it. Second option, you want this to become a bookmark. Then the program will automatically capture an image from the page you're linking and capture the text at the beginning of that page to show in this rectangle, in this box. Or you want to embed. And then you can embed a web page, of course, uh, it, it's an ambitious thing. 
especially if the other page is a dynamic page, it might not work very well, but it works very well when you want to embed a video, such as a YouTube video, and then it will be playable within the page that you have without making your page too heavy. And keep in mind, you may have noticed, so everything we do on a page goes to the servers of Notion. You may have noticed that initially when you start, for example, when you visit the class website or you start a page, initially things are slow and then they become faster and faster as the cache of your browser is filled with some of the content and then even longer pages become easier to load, load more quickly, okay? So let me just exemplify what I was saying. I'll go at the end. Of, let, let me go here. I create a block. And you see every time I have a block, the suggestion comes up, type slash for commands. And as I said, when I do this, I can then just scroll and select the options. And you see how many options I have. Or I can go straight to image. The moment I start typing I am, there is no other option that begins with image. And I can select this and upload or embed with a link. Of course, embedding an image with a link, especially when you take somebody else's image from another website, that is not good practice, right? Can also be illegal. It's called deep linking. It's called fetching. Because you are using somebody else's broadband, somebody else's time and power and cycles on their servers, right? If you put the link to an image that is on my server, the image will appear on your server simply because it will be loaded from there from the browser, but all the, that's all wasted traffic on my server, right? Because you're using the image, but I'm providing it, and the ser my server is, is busy providing you with that image. So uh, it may be illegal, and it, it clearly is not uh, very professional. And by the way, you know what's the simplest way to add an image? I cannot do it here because this is the university computer, so it's kind of inflexible. But otherwise, if you set up your computer, let's say a Windows computer, to be able to select a portion of the screen and copy that, you can just paste whatever you've copied from the screen as a new image in there. So that's yet another very easy way to add images. So that was the end of my presentation. So the next, say we have 10, 15 minutes. If you haven't created a <coughs> subscription, if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't accessed the free educational plan, then go back to week one on the class website. You will find the link and within a minute or two, you can be uh, a member uh, without paying having the professional plan for Notion. Otherwise, if you've already gone beyond that step, if you've created a page, the idea would be, and this will be the first digital assignment, it doesn't matter now for this assignment what the content is. It could be your grandma's recipe for lasagna. It could be about uh, football. Uh, it could be the notes from another class. The purpose of this hands-on test is simply for you to use as many forms of formatting and designing the page as possible, just to make yourself familiar. So in the end, the page doesn't have to be a good match in terms of style and design with the content. No. It's just the page you create now, or pages, if you want to create a sub-page, will just be what programmers call a playground. Playground is a page or a program where you just experiment with different bits of code. So try to create a numbered list. I try to create a, 
uh, a, a bulleted list, try to add an image, try to embed a video, try to add links, try to have a table of contents with headings, etc. And whenever you get stuck, then raise your hand and ask a question. For this kind of work, we can very well interrupt each other and everyone can listen and benefit from your questions. At the end of this, as I said, I'll show you how to share a page and if there is time and someone wants to come in and show what they've done, I would appreciate it. But for now, until 11, 15 or, or so, try to create something, try to add content, try to format content, try to have the most dynamic page that you can create. And if you don't have a computer, you can use your phone, you can go to the browser of your phone, or you can install the app, uh, which of course is free, the Notion app on your phone, okay? So go ahead, and of course, whatever you do today could be the skeleton for the digital assignment for the page or pages that you submit, share with me, when that digital assignment will be given later on, in a week or two, okay? So keep that in mind. So it's just a way so that technical support can be given whenever necessary. And, and at some point, if not today, next week, we can all exchange ideas on your user experience with this app, okay? So go ahead, type away, but work on Notion, right? Don't, don't go wherever you go. I, I would say Facebook, but Facebook is for boomers. In fact, maybe I'll, I should stop now and get to the next thing, even if you haven't had a chance to create much. Again, we'll start with Q&A. If you have questions based, you, you didn't have a chance like Sam did to come here and show me, ask me questions, you can ask questions now for future reference so that I can best assist you. The next thing after the Q&A, just comments, reactions, feedback, what you found that uh, was surprisingly good or surprisingly bad, what you hate, what you love about this uh, particular app. Okay, so questions first, technical questions of all kinds. At all levels, right? We all have different kinds of expertise in this room, but this is not a class for engineers, so feel free to ask the most basic questions. Yes, please. How do you move from text to log side by side? You just have to use the dots. You click and you click click. Then you can move around the text. And in order to make two text by side by side, you just have to move it by the side. The only issue is that if you want to move something by a block of text that is only one line long, then there is a very fine point where the horizontal will become vertical. And therefore, you, you have to have that kind of fine, finer touch. If you have an entire block, it is much easier. You move it to the side, and you see that the line that said to you, I'm putting it here, under this block, above this block, changes to a vertical line that says, I put it to the side of this. Then, there is another invisible line in between two blocks and when you move the cursor around, you will find at some point that that line becomes visible and allows you to move the separator and give more space to one block and less space to another. Keep in mind, however, that you can do very nice things with moving blocks around, moving images to the next of texts, but on a smaller screen, such as the screen of a smartphone, things that are side by side will just verticalize, will just become vertical, because they want to maintain readability and uh, make the page user friendly, so they adapt the same way that many other wiki software uh, do. They adapt to the size of the screen, they recognize how large the screen is, and then things that were side by side may just become vertical again in that particular view. Okay, more questions?
we have a few minutes for reactions. And again, be frank, be sincere. Don't be academic, okay? Of course, I've chosen this app. You don't have to love it. You'll have to do an assignment on it, but you can very well hate it and, and communicate your sincere reactions. Yes, please. Um, I find using the app like, very like, intuitive. So, um, like, people don't really have a background in like, organized stuff. It's like, really easy to pick up. Yeah, the, the, the first impression usually is that it's not that difficult, right? And also the idea, as I suggested at the beginning of the class, if you go through with the digital assignment, perhaps even a digital project, then you have something different to add to your resume when you apply for a job, instead of just placing there Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, right? Something that will attract the attention, catch the attention of a modern, more dynamic company. And again, there are many companies that are already using Notion, right? So having Notion in your resume, you acquire a little bit of confidence, uh, shows well, right? gives you a little bit of an edge. Other reactions, even negative reactions, please. And when it comes to app, when it comes to these kinds of apps, even the, the, the skin deep reactions are important. Yes? I'm looking for a way in like setting the style of the page. I want to be able to set a color palette, but I can't find an easy route to do that. You mean for the text or the highlights? Like the, just the structure of the page, like I want the background to be a certain color, I want the header to be a certain color, so there's a division between them, because right now it's just... I've never modified the background of the page, I don't know if it is possible at all, if there is code uh, for that. And in terms of font, you're limited to this, right? If you go to the corner, the top right corner, you find style, export, etc. And then you have a selection of three fonts, you can establish whether you want the page to occupy the full width of the screen. However, most people who are familiar with these apps will keep it narrow. Because again, your, your view when you're reading goes by blocks of text. So if you already have a narrower page, you go through it, you read it more quickly. And yeah, I see they have customized page, but um, yeah, I haven't really used it. What, what is in customized page, have you? Um, uh, because I, I don't use it for style, I use it for content. So let, let's see. Let's see what customized page tells us. No, not much. It's like the, right. the title of the page at the top where you have like the, the drop down menu and the yeah. test page for CCF. You can only control certain things such as discussions, etc. And of course you saw that one of the other options in here was to lock the page, which means anyone can see it whose uh, uh, privileges allow them to see the page, but they cannot make any changes. You yourself cannot make any changes, not even accidental changes, because when you have this kind of interface. So yes, maybe the help, the tutorial um, will, will provide some light. Maybe there is a way to do that. Again, I'm, I'm not the foremost expert. I, I use this on a daily basis, but I do certain things that are advantageous to me. Look, what I've posted, this is Friday's lesson plan. You find a link to the vast help collection, and within that, the most useful section is the keyboard shortcuts. That's like the cheat sheet for Notion. You have various Notion communities. They don't really have a public forum. So the best thing would be Notion on Reddit, which has 200,000 subscribers. Uh, they have a very active Twitter account. They have a blog, but it's like the company blog. It's geared toward, to, to other similar companies, similar profession, professionals in their field, not the user. Their blog is not really focusing on the, uh, on the users, okay? So it's time, that will be it for today. As usual, please sign the attendance.